if you're a buyer and you're getting discouraged about the current market and how hot it is and where prices are going and you're thinking maybe I should just wait a couple of years, maybe I'll save a little bit of money, I'm gonna give you two things to consider and two reasons why you could be wrong coming up next. Hey, what's going on friends? Dylan Onaka here with the Buy Big Island video blog. And this week we're gonna talk about a lot of input that we're getting. People are saying, hey, the market's crazy. And if I'm a buyer, maybe I should wait a couple of years, wait for prices to come down, wait for things to cool off and maybe I'll be better off. And so I'm just gonna give you two things here to consider where waiting may not pay off. And one of my favorite real estate sayings is, you shouldn't wait to buy real estate, you should buy real estate and wait, right? Because over time, definitely no doubt about it real estate over time always appreciates right and it's one of the best ways for normal people to build wealth and if you wait to buy people almost always regret it right the best time to buy real estate was yesterday and so we're going to talk about this week what is the cost of waiting how much will it cost you if you wait a couple of years and if things change will you better be better off or not and we've talked in the past about if there's a crash coming you know that i know that i don't think that's the case um, so you can watch that previous video about that. But to give you some numbers, just some data to consider about whether or not now is still a good time to buy, even though it's a difficult time for buyers right now, whether it's still a good time to buy or if you should hold off and wait for things to change in the future. So the first thing we're gonna look at here is your buying purchasing, your buyer's purchasing power, right? So we are at historically low interest rates right now. And this is an important factor when it comes to buying property because buyers, for the most part, buy on their monthly payment. They don't buy on the pur purchase price of the home, right? So when you get pre-qualified for a mortgage, you know, you'll figure out what your monthly payment is going to be. And normally that's what you're going to base your overall purchase price on is how much is it going to cost me today every month to make that payment. And if that's a payment that you can afford, that's what's going to determine what your purchase price is. So I'm using kind of numbers that apply to our market here in Kona. So you can run these numbers based on wherever you're at. I can send you a similar slide to see what this looks like for the price point that you're looking in. But let's just talk about a $700,000 house, right? So right now at interest rates around 3%, under 3%, you're looking at for a $700,000 house, it's going to cost you $2,800, $2,900 a month to buy a $700,000 house, right? But if over time, so the first question you gotta ask yourself, if I wait, will I be better off? Do you think interest rates will be higher or more in the future? And almost all experts, if you ask all the big banks, all the big analysts, people are projecting that interest rates are going to climb over the next 12 months and into the future. They're not gonna stay where they're at now. We're at historically low interest rates. So say the interest rates start to climb and you have to pay a point higher. You have to pay 3.75 or 4% for that same house. Now you're gonna be paying 32, 32 to $3,300 more, um, or that's what your payment is gonna be, right? So it's gonna be $500 more for that same $700,000 house. But if you're capped at $2,800, what it's gonna do is it's gonna reduce your overall buying power, right? So this scale shows you each price point. So if you wanna keep your payment around under $3,000, if the interest rate goes up one point from where it is today, you are now only gonna be able to afford a $630,000 house, right? So you're gonna lose $70,000 in purchasing power by waiting and interest rates going up. So even if the house costs a little bit more than you wanna pay right now, maybe you wanna buy a 650 house, but you're gonna to have to pay 675. That may make sense because your payment is gonna be locked in at today's interest rates and you're not gonna face that payment in the future and you're gonna have less buying power. So that's a, that's a very significant consideration is what is your buying power going to be in the future? This is one of the things that is driving the market right now is people have more buying power. So they may be buying a home that is a little bit higher cost than they normally would because interest rates are so low. So think about that. You could be losing seven seventy thousand dollars in purchasing power by waiting 12 months if the interest rates go up just one point, just one point to three, seven, five or four percent. All right. Second thing, do you believe that homes in the future, the price of homes will go up or go down. And this is totally your opinion. Almost all experts are, are projecting continued appreciation. Nobody's projecting a depreciation in home values. So if you agree with that, if you think homes will continue to appreciate and what we're, gonna lose, what we're using in this 
illustration here is a very modest projection of 3% appreciation. Okay, so it's kind of like the historical average, you know, three to 4% is a historical average in terms of home appreciation. So uh, right now homes are appreciating at a higher rate. So these numbers would be even more inflated. But if we're just saying, okay, over the next three years, we're going to see that normal historical appreciation of 3%. This is showing you what today, if the house costs $700,000 in this top line, in one year at 3% appreciation, it'll cost you 721,000. In two years, it'll cost you 742,000. And in three years, it'll cost you 764,000. So if you wait, even with appreciation, are you better off paying 10 or $20,000 more than you would like on the $700,000 house now, or waiting three years and paying $64,000 more? So you don't necessarily save money over the long run if you wait so you couple that with the previous slide, right? Where you're losing $70,000 in purchasing power and now you gotta pay $64,000 more in overall price. You add that two together, right? We're talking $130,000 is what the real cost of that house is greater than what it is now. Even if you gotta overpay, even if you're not comfortable saying, ha, ah, you know, the house is only really only worth 675, but I gotta pay 700,000 for it. You may be overpaying in your opinion by $25,000 now, but if you wait a couple of years, it could be a hundred plus thousand dollars that you have to pay more for that home. And then you got to calculate that interest over 30 years and what the difference is at the different interest rate. There's all kinds of other factors that go into it, but you definitely, there's a very clear indication here that you're not going to save money by waiting, right? So it can be a little bit discouraging right now getting beat out. Uh, just talked to my brother this morning. We wrote four offers this week for over $2 million and we got one $22,000 lot into escrow, right? So for buyers, it's a rough time right now. And we, I, I get it, but just giving up and saying, I'm going to stop and, and stop trying. Cause I'm just going to wait a couple of years that may not be in your best interest and it may not be beneficial for you. So just wanted you to consider that, think about it, reach out about your specific situation. If you have any questions, get involved, talk to a lender, run some numbers you know, look at this scientifically and uh, based on data, then more emotion, and you may be able to make a better decision. So as always, if you have any questions, just reach out Dylan at buybigisland.com or comment in the comments below. Would appreciate a like on the video or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube and I'll see you guys next week. Aloha.